All right, guys, welcome back for another video. Dream Team 2. Dream Team 2. Have we forgot about them? Uh, the greatest team nobody talks about. Uh, I forgot who was all on this team. I think David Robinson was on here. Uh, I can't remember who I was on here. But you'll see on the thumbnail, whatever like that. But um, let's, ju let's just get right to the video, man. I don't want to keep y'all too much from letting us talk about this stuff. Okay. I'm going to <laughs> Shout out to Joey Arnett. No, not, I'm sorry, not Joey, Johnny Arnett for the video. I apologize, Johnny. Johnny Arnett. Today, I wanted to take a moment to remember one of the greatest USA teams. Okay, yeah. Ooh, they had a, ooh, they had a squad. They had that Gary Payton. Carl Malone, Reggie Miller, uh, Scotty Pippen, John Stockton, Penny Hardaway, Charles Barkley, Shaq, Grant Hill, hey, Hakeem, I want to say that's Glenn Robinson and David Robinson. Uh, I guess it's when uh, Michael Jordan had retired, but I'm, I'm not going to keep pausing through the video. I'm just going to watch it. Sorry. They're a dominant gold medal team, but yet they're very overlooked historically. So the question then becomes, why is the 1996 USA team so overlooked? Well, simply put, the 1992 Dream Team takes all of the attention and dominates the debates and conversation. Which is understandable yeah, to an extent, too. because when you have a team headlined with names like Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, and Larry Bird, naturally, they'll be the team that everyone wants to talk yeah, about. Of course, especially Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, and Michael with Jordan. That being said, he just said the that, Dream uh, Team has some of the greatest names me. from a basketball fame standpoint, I could certainly argue that the 96 team was the deeper team from top to bottom. I know it sounds crazy, but listen to the guys on the 96 team. The starters were Gary Payton at the point, Reggie Miller at the two guard, <laughs> Grant Hill at small forward, Charles Barkley at power forward, and Hakeem Olajuwon was leading at center. Ooh, that was uh, Carl Malone, that was a bean starting five right Eddie there. Hardaway, Shaquille O'Neal, Scottie Pippen, Mitch Richmond, and David Robinson. Oh, there's Mitch Absolute Richmond. Oh, okay, okay. All over the roster, and there isn't even a single Christian Leitner in sight to weigh them down. This squad, just like the other great USA teams, dominated the rest of the world with a perfect 8-0 record on their way to the Damn. gold medal. Charles Barkley was still dominant and led this team in scoring, just like he did in 1992 as well. Pretty much oh, every yeah. crucial that. aspect of team basketball, that. this 96 team had covered. The most standout, obvious area of excellence on this team was the center position, which I can say, yeah. with complete confidence, was the strongest rotation at the center position there has ever been in any form of basketball. Hakeem Olajuwon, Shaquille O'Neal, and David Robinson. Whichever of these three guys you choose- I'm sorry, I'm back, guys. I thought I had um, lost my, my audio or something like that. I just heard something in the background in my headphones, my bad to be relegated to the third string and all likelihood instantly becomes the greatest third stringer of all time. Hakeem Olajuwon was one year removed from being back-to-back -back finals MVP winner. David Robinson was one year removed from being the league's MVP and Shaquille O'Neal was quickly approaching his hey! years as he was just about to start his career with the Lakers. Yeah, good luck with that lineup. Hey, that's, ooh, Three point that's, shooting that's was another crazy. area where they stood out. Unsurprisingly, Reggie Miller was the leader in three-point attempts as he shot a tremendous 41.5% over the Olympics. Mitch Damn. Richmond was low-key one of the greatest three-point shooters as well. He was second in attempts as he shot 42.3% from that distance. <clears throat> Along with those two all-time great shooters, you also had other guys who were pretty good at the long ball, like Penny Hardaway, John Stockton, and even Scottie Pippen. Speaking of Scottie Pippen and the perimeter game, the 96 USA team was torching opponents from that distance on offense, but they were also shutting them down on defense because Scottie Pippen was one of the greatest defensive players of, of all course. time, and he was coming off of the Bulls' 72 and 10 had Gary Payton season, too? where he made first team all defense. Shutting down the point guards was Gary Payton, of who was course. known as the glove for his incredible defense as he was in then the Then he got Shaq, Hakeem, and David Robinson the down low. Player of the year. If somehow Man. the opposing wings were able to get past this perimeter defense, they were meeting either Shaq, Hakeem, or Robinson at the rim. Right. Kind of a nightmare situation for the rest of the world. Over the next two seasons after these Olympics, the NBA Finals would be represented by the dynamic duo of John Stockton and Carl Malone. 
but in these summer games, they were simply coming off the bench and would be pick and rolling opposing countries all night long. <laughs> then there's a couple the players who are right to the greatness of the squad, but can easily be overlooked or written off as well, especially by younger basketball fans, and that's Grant Hill and Penny Hardaway. To really appreciate these guys, you need to understand how good they were in 1996 before injuries disrupted their careers. Hey. This same year, Michael Jordan was asked in an interview who he saw as the next Michael Jordan. The guy he would pass the torch to when he does inevitably Hill. retire. Grant Hill. Michael said two players, Grant Hill and Penny Hardaway. Yeah, that alone should tell you that these guys were extra level special. Grant was a 6'8 small forward who was having an all-around statistically monstrous start to the beginning of his career, similar to the beginnings of Oscar Robertson and Larry Bird. He could handle the ball, he could facilitate, he could rebound, and he could score with the best of them. He could do it And then there's Penny, who was a large 6'7 point guard who was often compared more to Magic Johnson than Michael Jordan. He was young, athletic, a great passer, and a 20 points per game score. Hey. Looking at the results of this group and the talent of the roster from top Just to look bottom, at their squad, man. That's crazy. This was the greatest team of all time if just one aspect had been different. The absence of Michael Jordan. That's it. Man. That's the difference for most people who recognize the Imagine they had Michael Jordan, too. Dream team. If Jordan had been on the 96 team, in my opinion, that would have been the greatest team of all time. I understand there's other differences between the two squads. Like, imagine if they had took off Mitch Rich, Mitch Richmond, and added Jordan. And let's say if uh, was Larry Bird out of, out of the league, then let's say if he, let's say he was out in the league, still in the league. Put him in place of uh, who would I take out? Uh, damn, scratch that. Forget I said that. Just I can't. John Stockton. Put him in place of John Stockton. That would be a crazy ass team. But let me stop talking, man. Let me stop. Let me finish the video. How Larry and Magic played on the 92 team in Barcelona. I won't try to downplay Magic's contribution, who had been out of the NBA for a year at that point due to his HIV retirement. But you could still tell by watching the 92 games that he was still an elite player. Bird, on the other hand, was a different situation. He barely played that many minutes that summer because his back was so jacked up at that point. So despite how great he looks in the team photos, the reality was that he didn't have a major impact on their greatness. Yeah, was so with the major loss of Magic Johnson from the 92 team to the 96 team, you had major additions of Gary Payton's defense and Shaquille O'Neal and Hakeem Olajuwon joining David Robinson down low. That makes up for it in my mind. Plus the 96 team was 12 all-stars deep instead of 11. Again, if Jordan Oops, sorry, had played, Linda. I think the 96 team would have been the greatest ever. They would have been. The do you think this team is the second greatest USA team of all time? And do you agree that if they had I it, agree. they would have been the best ever? I Happy agree. Happy fourth, everyone. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm with Johnny on this one. I believe they are the second best um, dream team. Uh, a lot of y'all probably gonna say the team that's playing that was playing now that just won gold medal the, was it yesterday the day before yesterday they probably the second best are the best but nah nah if you go 8-0 and oh, you go undefeated in the uh, Olympics you're number one or number two of all time uh, dream team in the NBA in, um, in history but um I agree with them like I, like I said I agree with them um <sighs> Imagine if Jordan was on that team, man. Like I said, replace uh, Jordan with Mitch Richmond. I mean, yeah, put Jordan in the place of Mitch Richmond. Uh, and, of course, he'll be starting over Reggie Miller. Uh, that team would have been crazy, man. That team would have been crazy. What is it? The USA teams that were that we never got in ranking the best USA teams. Hmm. Interesting. I might watch that video maybe next or later. Let me know if I should watch that video. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, y'all. Subscribe if you're new. Let me know what y'all think about this video. What you think about uh, Dream Team 2? If it's the second best Dream Team ever, let me know in the comments below. And uh, shout out to Johnny on that for the video. Subscribe to him as well. And um, till next time, your boy King Smooth. I'm out.